Wireless technology has come a long way, but when you're building a house, it's important to bring in a professional. We're going to check out this property, and I'm going to tell you about all the mistakes that I made in my home and what I wish I would have done differently. Let's go. So here we are at the North, the, the North Oaks Rough Inn. Um, low voltage, lots of low voltage going in here. You can kind of see our cabling draped through where all the colorful, colorful stuff here in the ceiling. Uh, a little bit early in the phase as far as managing the cable and getting things as tidy as we like them. But uh, essentially, uh, I like to think of our low voltage as the central nervous system of the house. So internet, cable, security, audio, video, home automation, control, things like that. That's all in our realm. Anything below 50 volts is considered low voltage, and that's where we step in. Starting at the front door, you probably are familiar with a thing like Ring Doorbell uh, that works wirelessly. Uh, but if you've watched our channel, you know that I highly recommend power over Ethernet cameras. And well, if you're building your house from the ground up, you have the opportunity where you can actually run Ethernet to your doorbell as well. Uh, that way you're going to get a very strong signal. They will also run your standard cable for the doorbell as well that would you know, power the doorbell and go to the chime. Uh, that way you have options. Uh, but Ethernet doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, so if I were to start over and build a house, I would run Ethernet to the doors and I would run Ethernet to all the corners of the home. And I actually would run more than one. Uh, so when I added Ethernet into our house, I added uh, cameras for the corners, but I wish I would have done like two. Uh, that way I can have multiple angles. And so after the fact, it's a lot more expensive. It's not that much money to do it up front. Uh, coming in here, we'll see this is a front office. They've got a speaker box, or they've got a box for the Ethernet there. Uh, and that's actually for a wireless access point. Uh, so if you build your network out well, you can have Ethernet throughout the house uh, for things like computers and TVs that require a lot of bandwidth. Uh, but then also you can put these access points that are going to work together and make sure you have really strong Wi-Fi throughout. Is we wire infrastructure to have multiple access points in multiple areas of the homes to distribute the Wi-Fi evenly and uh, reliable. Any time where we can make a triangle is always a solid solution. So if we have an access point here, I would have an access point on the other side of the house and then one kind of in the middle between the two on the uh, secondary level or the basement level. So anywhere we can kind of create those triangles in the home, that gives us the best coverage. In a bedroom or an entertainment space, often you're going to want to mount a TV on the wall. Um, I really like what they've done here where they've got both the high voltage so for the outlet as well as they've got the coaxial cable and multiple CAT6 wires. Um, often I ask, why would you need three CAT6 wires? Well, this actually is going to help future-proof the home. Uh, that way you can run your internet, you can do a video distribution, you've got a backup for power, what have you, whatever you need, uh, that way you're set. And so we see here in the wall they've got kind of this uh, zigzag pattern throughout. And that's actually so that they can um, put the lights in after the fact, and no matter where they pick, you know, they're going to have access to the cable and the wall. And so you can actually do the same thing uh, with this box as well. And so in some of the rooms in the house, we'll see that they've actually placed it down low. Uh, that way, if in the future they want to put a TV up here, you can always go back up, uh, but it would be difficult to say have something here and then want to lower it. And so in this case, they know for sure they want to put the TV right here. So they mounted it ahead of time um, and they're all set with all the cabling that they need. We call this a three by one. This is our basic TV run. It's three ethernet cables or CAD6. And then we have an RG6 or a coax, which is probably the most common and recognizable cable. Uh, you know, the cable boxes in your house, satellite feeds, this stuff has been around for a long time. Uh, very common to see in houses. Category wire, not so, uh, not as old, still, still very important. I would argue more important than any other cable in the home. CAD6 allows us to distribute uh, anything from power over ethernet, internet, video, security, I mean, you name it, it's a Swiss Army knife of cabling, so we're able to do quite a few things with it, it's very cool. We call this kind of the future-proofing of the TV, where a client may or may not want a TV at the time when they move in, but want the option to do so later. So we run everything kind of down low in a fashion that if they ever want to move it up, we're able to do that. 
we're able to kind of cut a hole in the wall, pull our cables up, get them the TV height, but for the time being, they don't want to see it. They might put a dresser in front of it. So to keep everything kind of out of sight, out of mind, and aesthetic, we run it down low with the option to move it back up later. What we have here is a back box that we put in the ceiling in order to keep insulation from falling out of the hole. We'll put rough end brackets up that'll mark the spot where our speakers will go so that when we come to actually install the speakers, everything's already cut out for us. The insulation is nice and contained up in the ceiling and it makes things easier for all the trades. One thing I regret about our home is that I didn't think about uh, where I was going to have the furniture and place uh, the, the screen. Uh, so we knew that we wanted to do a theater, so I went ahead and I put speakers in the ceiling and I put them right where the builder said to put them, which was in the back of the room. Well, now our couch and our, our chairs is actually in the middle of the room, and so our speakers are behind us. So if I had thought ahead, I would have mapped out where that's going to be and then you know thought ahead to like put the correct cabling in the right spot. And also something they've done here in this property they think is really cool is they're actually putting an outlet in the floor uh, and this is something that you could use for your theater chairs, you could use that for your lamp. Uh, in my case, I think it would be great to use for our Neo remote. Uh, it's a Control 4 remote, and it requires, it has its own little charging stand, and so I think that would be another good use. You could just have that there right next to your chairs. Uh, they also have future-proofed the home in that they have conduit here. Um, so not only do we have enough cable to do whatever we need to do today, but in the, in the future, if uh, cable standarding changes, uh, we have conduit that's flexible. It can actually be pulled all the way back to the mechanical room, uh, which is the central source uh, for distribution. If you watch my home tour, you know that we have a new exercise room that we recently finished off. But had we thought about it ahead of time, we could have actually mounted uh, a TV up high and had all the wiring in place. Uh, so instead, we're just running ours off of Wi-Fi, which is fine because it's a short distance. But oftentimes, exercise rooms are in an area where you're going to have a lot of concrete. Concrete is not good for Wi-Fi. Uh, so I hear a lot of people that have their router is in their basement and they're wondering why they're not getting a good reception to their ring doorbell. Well, it's because there's concrete in the way and Wi-Fi is not getting through that. And so uh, whenever possible, it's nice to think ahead for where you might want to place a TV in the future. And what are some best practices, like areas you might want to avoid or like best ideal locations absolutely so anything that's going to reflect signals such as um, aluminum in the ceiling so a lot of HVAC is, is tin and aluminum that does not do well with signal it'll stop and we call it the Faraday cage effect so anytime there's concrete spray foam anything that's impermeable we try to avoid those or put access points locally in those areas brick rooms stucco we kind of segment those areas and make sure that we have covered specifically for those areas in the home so when you're thinking about pre-wiring your home, you really want to uh, make sure you have good coverage in all the rooms. I recommend a minimum of one spot per room. Uh, in some cases, it makes sense to have it on multiple walls. So in my office in the basement, my desk is in one corner and the ethernet is right there, which is nice. Uh, but now I want to actually flip it because like the sun is coming in and it always glares off of my monitor. But if I moved my monitor and my computer to the other side of the room, well, then I'd have to run a cable across. So if I had thought about that ahead of time, I would have actually put multiple Ethernet ports in that room. And honestly, this cable is very cheap. The, the real cost is like you know, the labor of doing it. I mean, he's doing it all at once. You see, he's pulling all of this cable. Uh, so um, if you're doing a, a new build, the cost to add extra Ethernet and to future-proof your home, really, it, it doesn't add a lot to the overall cost. Whereas if I wanted to make that change now, with the drywall in place, I'd have to open the wall up, run it up either through the attic or through, uh, and it would be very expensive and a big mess. What run is this, Jacob? This is the uh, bathroom TV and okay. the family room TV. Fantastic. So he's actually pulling two different locations at the same time. Very efficient. He's got everything labeled accordingly to where it's going to go so that when he pulls it up into the attic space on the upper level, He'll, he'll basically break it off and pull it to two separate areas. So we got multiple things going on here. All of our boxes kind of in the same area. This is where we prep everything. Everything's pulled from here, distributes throughout the house. Very important when we're running wire to be conscious of wire rubbing on other wire. When you pull too many wires through the same hole, there'll be friction burn. And I've actually seen wires get cut in half by being told pulled too aggressively and too close to other wires, it'll actually compromise, eat through the jacket and burn through some of the conductors. So 
very important to keep slack off wire, to not pull, put any strain on it whatsoever. It's best practice. Eventually, everything will land in this area. This is what we call our future automation distribution box. So essentially, all the cabling in the house will come to this box. We'll get terminated accordingly, either in an F connector or in a keystone or an RJ45. These are the type of ends that we put on these cables in order to terminate them and distribute down to the rack, which eventually there'll be a floor standing rack here on casters that'll be able to move around. It'll house all the low voltage equipment, amplifiers, control system, you name it, it'll be in this rack and all be distributed from the can here. Uh, we really hope to come back and check that out when it's done. But in the meantime, check out this video. I think you guys are going to love it. It's another big modern home here in Minnesota that's got the works. It's got lighting. It's got shades. It's got video distribution. You guys are going to love it. Until next time, take care.